Hi everyone. Welcome to our learning video sessions on Microsoft Excel for Chemical Engineers. This is our 11th video lesson. This video lesson teaches how to use Microsoft Excel software for energy balance calculations in chemical engineering. In this lesson, we focus on the enthalpy calculations. Phase transitions occur from the solid to liquid phase and the liquid to gas phase and in the reverse order. During these transitions, large changes in the value of enthalpy for a substance occur that need to be calculated accurately. This is called as latent heat changes. For a single phase, the enthalpy varies as a function of temperature called as sensible heat. In order to determine the enthalpy change, there are many methods. Heat capacity equations, enthalpy tables, enthalpy charts, and computer databases. In this lesson, Let's focus on the heat capacity equation. For enthalpy changes in a single phase, the heat capacity equation is in the form of enthalpy change delta H is equal to integration from T1 to T2, that is the temperature change of the function Cp dt. For a mixture, the heat capacity can be calculated by the sum of mole fractions multiplied by the heat capacity of each component. For the heat capacity of a component, there are equations. As an example, heat capacity is equal to A plus B times temperature plus C times square temperature. Values of A, B and C for different components can be found from tables. Let's discuss an example so that it will be clear to us why we should use Microsoft Excel in enthalpy calculations. The heat capacity of carbon dioxide gas as a function of temperature has been found by a series of repeated experiments as shown in the table. Find the values of the coefficients in the heat capacity equation. Cp is equal to A plus B times temperature plus C times square temperature. That yields the best fit to the data. You can see that this problem is quite difficult to solve using manual calculations. We have already learnt the nonlinear data fitting with the least square method using Microsoft Excel. So let's apply the least square method to find the A, B and C values to fit the heat capacity equation. Let's first take A, B and C values as 1, 1, 1. This is just an assumption for initial values. Then let's find the assumed values of heat capacity Cp. To apply the same calculation for all x values, we need to fix the assumed value cells. Now 
Then let's find the difference between the actual CP values and the assumed CP value. To avoid negative marks in the differences, we need to take the square value of the differences. So we take the square of the difference between actual CP and assumed CP. Then let's find the sum of the square differences. Open the solver tool, select the objective cell as the sum of square differences, set the target value as 0. Mark the changing cells as A, B and C cells. Then click on the solve button. Here we obtain the fitted values for A, B and C coefficients. Like this, we can find the heat capacity equations for different components. Let's see one more example to use Microsoft Excel in enthalpy calculations for a mixture. A waste gas emitted from a stack has the following composition on a dry basis. The temperature at the bottom of the stack is 550 degrees Fahrenheit. If the enthalpy change is minus 2616 BTU per pound mole gas, what is the temperature at the top of the stack? Ignore water vapor in the gas and any energy effects resulting from the mixing of the gas components. On the screen, we can see the heat capacity equations for the four components in the stack gas. These heat capacity equations can be obtained from CP equation tables. But the unit of CP is in joules per gram mole per Kelvin. So we should first convert the equations into the unit of BTU per pound mole per degree Fahrenheit. So we can apply a unit conversion table as we already learned in our lesson 7. We can use the conversion factors in Excel software and find out the final conversion factor to convert joules per kilogram per Kelvin to BTU per pound mole per degree Fahrenheit. Multiply the coefficients of the equation by the obtained conversion factor. Then find the conversion factor from Kelvin to degrees Fahrenheit. Substitute the relation of the temperature into the equation where temperature appears. We have created a table in the Excel spreadsheet for the coefficients of the CP equations and the mole fractions of the four gas components. Then find the coefficients of the overall CP equation. Now here we have obtained the overall CP equation for the gas mixture. If we do like this, it is easy to substitute into the overall CP equation in the integration step. So here we obtain the converted equation for heat capacity CP. Now let's select the basis as 1 pound mole of the stack gas. According to our problem, 
we have been given the enthalpy change that is delta H but we don't know the outlet temperature so the manual calculation would be quite difficult for this problem as there is an integration step in terms of temperature capital T we have to use an iterative method to solve this problem first let's assume a value for the outlet temperature let's say 100 degrees Fahrenheit there is no direct function for integration in Excel software so we have to substitute the values accordingly into the integrated equation we know that the integration of a general CP equation is in the following format. So here we can apply the integration step for the CP equation to calculate the enthalpy change delta H. Now we obtain the calculated enthalpy change at the assumed outlet gas temperature. But as per the given data, we know that the enthalpy change should be equal to minus 2616. So we can make a calculation cell for the difference between the assumed and calculated enthalpy change. Now we can apply the goal seek or solver tools in Microsoft Excel software to iterate the assumed temperature for the difference to be zero. Since there is only one cell of assumed value to be iterated, goal seek tool is more easier. Let's apply the target cell as the calculated enthalpy difference and the value to be zero. the cell to be varied as the assumed temperature. Now here we obtain the final answer as the outlet gas temperature. The beauty of this calculation in Microsoft Excel is that we can simply perform our calculations in a more comprehensive way so that you can learn every important step in enthalpy calculations related to energy balance. Even you can play with the calculation back and forth by changing the temperature and find the new enthalpy change. As a summary in this lesson, we learned how to comprehensively use Microsoft Excel for enthalpy calculations in energy balance problems in chemical engineering. We learned the tedious unit conversions fitting a heat capacity equation with the data from experiments or computer databases and how to perform iterative calculations dealing with the enthalpy change. In the next lesson, let's talk about the use of Microsoft Excel software for a chemical engineering design problem including both material balance and energy balance for a reactive system. That's the end of our 11th video lesson. Have a nice day and goodbye.